morning and welcome to the chair. My name is Amy Bauman. I'm with For His Glory Ministry and this is our Tuesday teaching. We come together each week, figure out what chair we're sitting in, look at God's word, apply it to our lives, hopefully becoming more encouraged and more like Jesus. But if you've been joining us over the month of January, it hasn't been a series, so to speak, but God has definitely been getting us this theme, um, looking at ways that we can start off this new year, 2023. I have lots to share with you today as we're wrapping up January, but before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you. I thank you as I look over the last month and the truth that you have given us, how it all aligns, it, it all adds up, it all makes perfect sense. And so I just thank you for how much you love us and what you want us to hear. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place, into this time today so that I may speak your truth with love and that we pray that you will open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have for us today. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you're, this is your first time joining us, just a special welcome to you. Uh, and if you ever want to go back and look at our past episodes, you can do that on Facebook. Uh, you can also go to my YouTube channel and see um, all the different episodes al along with Truth in the Streets, which is our Sunday service. But over the course of the month, we have been looking at many ways to start this new year, 2023. The very first week we looked at just give up, giving up control, uh, our expectations, surrendering to Jesus. I think one of the biggest things that maybe some of us are still hanging on to is, you know, wanting normal back, wanting normal to come back. But my friends, normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. And you can see that um, just on social media and different things that people are using. But it's so true. Right. When we look at God's word, we understand that we're living in the end times, whether that's five days or five months or five years. Right. We're getting closer and closer to Jesus's return. We're not going to go back to normal. That's just not going to happen. The, the next week we looked at a word for 2023. And I had encouraged all of you to ask the Lord to give you a word. Um, I've been hearing back from you, uh, some of your words. It's amazing the, the different words that I've been hearing from other people. It's um, so beautiful that God wants to give us one word to chew on over the course of the year, or I should say over the course of a season. I reminded you that um, God doesn't work on our calendar. So when we, when we switch over to a new year, you still might have that, that same word. Um, because it's still a season that God wants you to, to look at it and apply it to your lives. So it's just a beautiful thing for us to stay teachable. And I think that was the key ingredient to that message. The third week we said, what are we saying out loud? And we talked about how important it is to speak life over our communities, over our families, over ourselves, over our situations, and not saying the negative, not saying I'm sick, I'm depressed, my marriage is never going to get better. We need to speak life, we need to speak God's words, God's truth, and put that devil right where he needs to be under the feet of Jesus. Last week was an interesting one. We asked the question, what is our drug of choice? And it's it's curious to know that not all things, I mean, you would immediately think like drugs or alcohol as a drug that we're taking, but there, I introduced um, just a thought that maybe there are other things that you're using to cope. I explained that I used furniture rearranging and um, some obsessive compulsive things to like control my situation even when there was no control. So I just encourage you to look at your life and, and see what are you using, you know, to cope through the chaos. And, and then today, as I had asked the Lord, um, how does he want to finish up uh, this month? He gave me this visual. 
And uh, as clear as day, a, a Bible sitting on a table with this glass of water being poured over the Bible. This is, this is what it looks like. And this imagery, right, is unfortunately the shape of our truth today. Diluted, filtered, watered down. And it's God's word, right? This, this truth that, that some of us are getting is coming right from the pulpit, right from the pastors, uh, right from these places that are saying this is the truth, but it's, it's watered down. It's, it's a little bit changed. It's, it's a little bit lesser, so that kind of fits everybody in. And people are choosing this watered down truth because that means then that they can keep doing what they want to do. They can keep living in the flesh. They can keep making these choices because, you know, it's, it seems to be acceptable. It's kind of this watered down truth and, and it, it's a gray area. So we're going to just say it's okay to do it. And you will always, unfortunately, be able to find someone who is going to validate your life, validate your choices, validate your decisions based and say, hey, it's okay to do this. It's, it's okay for you to live that way. It's your choice. It's your truth. But what I want to ask us today is what does God's word say about this watered down, diluted, filtered truth? What does God's word really say? Second John 1, 9 through 11 says this, Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. That's something to chew on for sure. Uh, I think about that. It's a slippery slope when there's someone in your life that is not telling you the whole truth, is not um, leading you in a direction that aligns with God's word. Our flesh will hear that and our flesh will say, oh, but, but they're doing it. It's okay. Let's, let's just, you know, it'll be fine. And our flesh will start to take over and all of a sudden the path that we're walking on we're now off the path. And you're like, no, I'm stronger than that. I can be stronger than that if there's someone in my life that doesn't align with God's word. Well, I've seen it time and time and time again, and I myself have experienced it. And that's why the Lord tells us to be surrounded with like-minded people. Because otherwise, our flesh, which is very powerful, because we're all right? Living in a broken world, a sin-filled world where the enemy is operating, our flesh will want to go. And so we need to make sure that we're listening to people, that we're following people, that we're trusting in people that are speaking out God's word. Second Timothy 4, 3 through 4 says this, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I'm reading a series right now, Left Behind series, and it's amazing. Um, these two men, LaHaye and Jenkins, wrote these books, this Left Behind series, and so much of it is based on scripture. Obviously, there's some fictional things about the characters, but they have done their research and they've done their studies. And it, it was sad. I mean, I'm like halfway through and the last book that I just finished reading was talking about um, Jerusalem and it was filled with all of these businesses 
uh, you'd walk up and down the streets of Jerusalem and there, there was all these um, massage parlors and tarot card readings and fortune tellers and, and strip clubs and brothels and all of these things. And this is where the world is going. And when people want to, to turn away and only listen to what their itching ears want to hear, right? This is what God's word tells us. The shape of the world is going. And we need to make sure as followers of Jesus Christ that we don't have any part of that. We need to stay steadfast and firm, planted in God's word. As the world changes, we need to stay constant in who we are and who God is. Second Peter 2. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. Jesus points out that there will be false prophets and false teachers and the Antichrist is alive and breathing throughout the world. Are we woke? Are we ready to listen to God's truth and not fall in, slip away, go off the path, listening to the world and the truth? What does God's word say? We need to be dil diligent. We need to be intentional. We need to make sure that we're not listening to a watered down, filtered, diluted truth of the world. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are ga grapes gathered from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit. Excuse me. But the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And then Romans 16, 17, and 18. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. Our flesh wants what it wants. Our itching ears want to hear things that will satisfy our flesh. You know, we would push an easy button if we could, if our flesh could, but we're not just made up of flesh. We have a soul. We have a spirit. We need to make sure that we are aligned with God's word and that we are choosing Jesus every single day. So how do we make sure our truth is not watered down? Our truth needs to be God's word. Double check everything against the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to help you. Do you know the Holy Spirit? I've been on this amazing journey over the last four years to have a better understanding of who he is. And for a long time, it was a mystery, right? It was easy to believe in God. 
it was easier to believe in Jesus. I mean, Jesus walked among us as a man and he died on the cross, but the Holy Spirit was just this, it was hard to put my finger on. It was hard to grab onto, but I had this amazing experience and I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I have been learning more about him. And he's this, he's real, right? It's, it's not, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three and three, but one, but the Holy Spirit is real. And it's important for us to know him as our helper. And, and let me remind you of John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father... He will testify about me. The Greek word for that, for that advocate is paraclete, which means someone who comes alongside us. He comes to counsel us, comfort us, and give utterance to our prayers when we don't have the words. He was sent to live inside those who believe in Jesus to help produce God's character in us because we can't do it in our own flesh and our own strength. We need a helper. We need the Holy Spirit. And in a way we cannot do on our own, the Holy Spirit will build into our lives love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can't do that in our sinful nature but we can align our lives with God's word. We can surrender to Jesus. We can invite him in to work and move and help us live a life filled with righteousness. He will also help us know what our truth is. This happened to me um, last week. I was listening to something. I was, I was listening to this person um, on, uh, at a conference and all of a sudden, all of a sudden something caught in my, in my spirit. And I'm like, that, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem to align with God's word. And a lot of other things that this person said were great, but this one thing didn't make sense to me. And so I looked up God's word. I asked my mentors about it. I, I dove a little deeper. I prayed about it. And that was the Holy Spirit saying, no, that, that's, not, that's not right. Th those words had been twisted, twisted to be used for their point, And that's not what my word says. And so that's what the Holy Spirit does is gives us that, oh, that, that doesn't seem right. Hmm, I better, I better look into that. I better, I better check that out. And all of us can do that every single day. As we're working and moving throughout our lives, the Holy Spirit will say, nope, mm, that's not right. I, I, don't, I don't want you to go there. I don't want you to do that. Or nope, that's not truth. Um, this is what my word says. But here's the thing. We need to know what God's word says so that we can say, well, no, this is the truth. So are we spending time in God's word? Are we renewing our minds? Are we going to church? Are we in small groups? Are we in Bible studies? Are we watching services online? Are we spending time allowing the Lord to give us his truth so that we know how to navigate in this world? We need to be doing what we have been talking about all month long. And this is how amazing God is. This is how he brings January 2023 all together for us right now today. We need to be surrendering. We need to be staying teachable. We need to be speaking life. We need to be silencing the enemy, not succumbing to the ways of the world and the enemy to cope in the chaos. And we need to be standing firm, standing firm on a solid foundation of God's truth, the whole truth, not watered down, not diluted, not filtered. 
We need to align our lives with God's word, not pick and choose what we want in God's word so that we can live our lives. We need the whole truth, not watered down, not filtered, not diluted. My prayer for us as we continue into 2023 is that we receive his truth for what it is, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. God's word is breathing and alive. And when we read God's word, it reads us. Are we going to surrender to that? Are we going to stay teachable? Are we going to speak life? Are we going to stay tuned in to God's word, submit to him so that we're not succumbing to the chaos of this world? And are we going to stand firm? The Bible tells us that it is not going to get easier, that normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. And as I was reading that book, uh, looking to the end, it's, it's not going to be a good place especially when his church is raptured and, and what is left is a, is a world without God. So we need to ask ourselves the hard questions. We need to make sure that we are aligned with his word. We need to make sure that we know who Jesus is and that he's living in our hearts and that we are following him all the days of our lives. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for how much you love us. I thank you for your great desire for us to know your truth. And Lord, I can feel it in the spirit, this expediting, this seriousness, this it's time. It's time to make sure that that we all know. It's time to make sure we're standing on a solid foundation. It's time to make sure that we wake up and, and know, Lord, that our days are limited and, and we need to make sure that we know who you are and we need to know where we're going. And so I, I thank you for these last few weeks, how you have reminded us. And Lord, I love how you tell us that we can always repent and return to your path. And if that's someone that's listening today, Lord, help them, strengthen them, encourage them, let them know how much you love them. Let them ask for forgiveness, uh, let them forgive themselves and let them return to the path that you have marked out for them. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your son. We thank you and I thank you for the Holy Spirit who gives me the words, who equips me and encourages me and helps me do uh, and sit in this chair. I couldn't do it in my own strength. And so I am so grateful for you, Holy Spirit, and for what I'm learning from you. We thank you for this time. We seal it all up by the blood of Jesus and we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today and for joining us and stay tuned uh, for next month as we'll see what the Lord is going to reveal to us and what we're going to talk about. But thanks for being here and for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.